with the exponential rise of technology and artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. how do you see technology weaving and su potentially supporting and being allies on this process of realizing the true nature of consciousness? Um, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of widespread fear of the potential dystopic reality that could come by virtue of, you know, AI and, and how fast it's growing right now. I'm curious to hear some of the promise and what you think of uh, it being a, an ally and supportive on the process. Well, I'm, I've been in, interested in artificial intelligence for quite a while. I, I, as a teenager, I was interested in it. And wow. I went to, I was interested in the question actually as a teenager, are we just machines? Are people just machines? So well, I went to MIT as a graduate student. I was in the artificial intelligence laboratory starting in 1979. And the was now the brain and cognitive science department because I wanted to study AI, see what machines could do, cognitive neuroscience, so I could see what human brains could do, and then to see if there's something special about it. So I've been very interested in this for for a long time, and I'm not. You know, people, a lot of people are, are thinking catastrophic things going to happen with that. I'm not too worried about it. Um, it's a it's a powerful technology, and it can be used, of course, for harm, but. So is nuclear. So is genetic engineering. I mean, we, we we have all sorts of technologies. What we what we learn is that um, we just have to be aware of, of the risks and and but also welcome the the benefits and have whatever rules and laws are are needed. And but you know there's always a risk. Someone could release some nasty genetically engineered virus that could kill humanity. Someone could release some kind of software that could really hurt, hurt us. Um, I, I, in terms of consciousness, I think that people are worried that AI will become conscious. And if you're thinking about it from a physicalist framework, in which space and time are fundamental, and the idea is that somehow physical circuits and software, which are not, a, which are not conscious, but if they have the right kind of computational complexity, right? Functional properties could appear so they could. Well, some people think they could actually lead to consciousness. They could mm -hmm. create consciousness. I think that that's not possible. On the other hand, well, for, for two reasons: space time is doomed. Physical objects don't exist when they're not perceived. Mm -hmm. So the circuits don't even exist to create the consciousness. Nor does the software. Mm. The the your your supercomputer exists when you look, and it doesn't exist otherwise. What exists is something outside of space time. What we see is a supercomputer or an AI when we project that back right. into space time. So some, something created within space time can never uh, can never exist outside of space time. Yeah, space time is just the pixels. Mm -hmm. Pixels aren't going to do it. Yeah, they're, they're just not going to do it for you. But what the pixels the pixels of within space time can be a portal. So right now I'm sitting here, I'm looking at you, and so I, I have certain pixels on my headset that are giving me insight about Andre. But Andre is not inside space time. Andre is the consciousness utterly outside of space time. But I got some pixels inside my space time headset that are giving me some insight into Andre's consciousness. Well, so the question is if we understand the headset well enough, could we reverse engineer it and open new portals into consciousness? Right? Now, we know one way, we have one technology for opening new portals into consciousness having kids. Very low tech, but it is a technology for opening new portals. So we know we we know that there is one technology that we know about for opening new portals into consciousness. So the question is, if we understand if we can reverse engineer that well enough, could we create new means for opening portals through our headset into consciousness? And for what it's worth, I, I think the answer is yes, that we we could. And I think that. It's possible that if we did that, some of the technology that we developed would look like artificial intelligence. But in that case, the interpretation of what's going on is 180 degrees opposite of what the standard inter the standard interpretation would be real physical circuits and software of a real physical system that was formerly unconscious suddenly became conscious. That's the standard view. I'm saying those circuits and software don't even exist when they're not perceived. They couldn't cause anything. However, my space-time headset may have pixels in it that look like circuits and software. They may look like an artificial intelligence that are opening a new portal into consciousness outside of the headset. And we may be able to actually do that as a technology 
that that uh, you know that is learned from from having kids, you know, mm. from that technology. So so you can see once again when you go down this rabbit hole, everything that you think about has to be thought about 180 degrees opposite from the standard way of thinking about it, and and it's a little hard now, but I suspect in, in a few short decades it's going to be just obvious to a generation that's been raised where virtual reality is just part of everyday life. Mm. Once you have spent time in virtual reality, you, all of a sudden you just sort of get this. It, it just becomes, the, the old view then just looks like flat earth. Hmm. They, the, the, the idea that space-time is fundamental and objects in space-time are, are the reality, that, that feels like flat earth. Yeah. So I think the next generation will get it. I think that's a really interesting perspective because sometimes I feel like in the next coming decade, we create uh, intelligence that appears to be conscious, right? We're get, getting there closer and closer every single day. Um, and so I wonder if creating something in an AGI that appears to be sentient by all markers of past the Turing test, it looks like it is, that would almost diminish our desire or seeking to know the true nature of what consciousness actually is. Just because we have something that appears to be conscious that maybe would uh, wither our way or are seeking to, to actually know what the real thing is. I'm not too worried about that. People, even with the, the, the chat GPT stuff that I play with a little bit and yeah. it's, it's not, doesn't impress me very much. Sure. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great tool, um, but it's really easy to make it do mistakes that, you know, even, uh, you know, a kindergartner wouldn't make. So uh -huh. it's, so it's, it's, it's not, but, but presumably, you know, in 10 or 15 years that it'll be much better and it, it will be you know, smart enough to to fool most people, and 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 be able to write better novels than anybody, and better music, and and so forth. I think that that won't stop people from still wondering about who they are and what is the nature of my consciousness, especially since your death forces the issue. Yeah. I mean, it it forces you. We we all we can get lost in the race of life for a while, but even just a little car accident or even a bad bug bite that could take you down, it forces you to realize, uh, I need to think outside of this box for a little bit. What, what am I? What happens when I die? When, and I will die. There's, there's no getting around it. Even if we can extend life to 200 years, it's a flash in the pan. It's, it's nothing. 200 years is, is just nothing. Mm -hmm. So the fundamental fact of life is death or at least the fundamental fact about birth is death. Mm -hmm. um, maybe life is something deeper than sure. both birth and death in, mm -hmm. in spiritual traditions. But so, so I'm, I'm not too worried that a conscious, that an apparently conscious AI, or maybe a, a, an AI kind of thing that really opens up a new portal into consciousness so that it really is funneling consciousness, just like the Andre avatar is really a portal into genuine consciousness. Maybe an AI that is a genuine portal into consciousness. I don't think that that's going to um, make people less interested in consciousness, or, or I th if anything, it it might open our minds even further. What what is an AI? What is this thing that, uh, that we could open a new portal into?